<laughs> my phone? My phone be dry. <laughs> Still ain't dry. Facts, I'll put it on Google. Thanks. Yo. One, two, one, two. One, two. I do, I, I do kind of talk low, a little bit. You do? A little bit, but. His, his mic to. sound good, though? It's dirty. It's valid. Brr, ma, 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 brr. Wait, you got water? <laughs> you want water? Nah, I'm good. I got my... Nah, he got his... I got my little something, something. bottle. <laughs> he got his... A little dranky drink. Yeah, my talking juice. <laughs> you give wine vibes. I mean, that's that wine. I knew it. Yeah. TP? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do I know? Yeah. All right. Yeah, just like, you know, don't think too hard, you know? Just chilling, just a combo with a mic. Gotcha. Yeah. I do laugh a lot, though. That's yeah. good. That's good. We love laughter. All right. Let me get my questions out. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> and it's. I don't, how do we pronounce the name properly? Because I don't want to butcher it. Um, Qua. Did it say Qua? Yeah. All right. Qua. Right. Cool. Qua. Qua. All right. Three, two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that my fault? Yeah. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> wow. That's crazy. You're a native New Yorker. That's like our. Well, Greeting cool. call. Oh, that's a fact. It's gonna leave me hanging. Like it's crazy. Welcome to Mind Over Matter, baby. I'm your host, Deja Wallace, and if this is your first time joining me, welcome. If this is not, welcome back. I appreciate you. Like you really came back to listen to join us for another episode. Like I really appreciate you. Like a big number twenty ninety two. You are ninety two. Yeah. Okay. Eesh. So we're gonna talk about about a lot this episode. From our visuals, you can already see we got a guest. And I'm excited to introduce him to you. We have Kwa here. He is creator and owner of Hood Visionaries. And partial, let the people partial owner. Facts. Partial owner, partial Facts. owner. Let the people know a little bit more about you. About me. Mm-hmm. Um born in Crown Heights, grew up in a star, best star. Um, photography, graphic design. Design clothes, used to play sports, retired athlete, a little bit. Yeah, just anything creative for me. We just mm-hmm. we just into it for real. Okay, fire, yeah. fire. So I have you here today as another creator to talk about dreams, right? Yeah. We're gonna talk about dreams and we're specifically we're gonna talk about dream killers. I don't wanna spend too much time talking about the haters, but it's a harsh reality that comes with following your dreams you're gonna have people that's trying to distract yeah. you from your vision so we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about your about the brand of course hood visionaries you're gonna talk about the media that the content creation behind it mm-hmm. we're gonna talk about environment because you did grow up in a sty so that's that's a whole episode right there Flexion. we're gonna talk about dreamers and dream killers so kick back relax and enjoy this episode so let's sure. get into it. So, Hood Visionaries. Right. Why that name? What does that mean to you? Hood Visionaries is kind of just... Just that term alone is kind of just like where we started out. It's like where we started out and where we're going type mm-hmm. of thing. It's like it's not really about where you're from. It's about where you're going. For right. Real. So it's just seeing past the block for real. It's like... Just seeing a bigger picture and just not wanting to be where you at. Just, mm-hmm. you know, like, 
we all been through our hardships and our struggle, but it kind of goes two ways. You know, it's either you're going to try to make it out or you're just going to fall in the fall in the pile with everybody else. Mm-hmm. And for me and my brothers, we just didn't want to fall in the pile. Right. Or, right. I like that. And so it's not just you. It's like how many of you are behind the brand? I would say service level is it's two of us. It's two? Yeah. All right. But it's, it is a collective, though. There are others within the group that have their hands in a pot. But mm-hmm. if we're talking about just creating the, the vision and the brand, there's only two of us. Okay. Yeah. And so what really inspired you was to just ri- rise, just step out of the crowd, basically, and do a, do something different? Yeah. It For... Originally, HV was my brother's idea. Mm-hmm. Now, we, we shared the same views, but I didn't really take it to the lengths of where he took it. But for me, it was just more so like for the youth and for my family. For him, it's like everybody, like, well, us, you know, us black people, you know, our culture. Mm-hmm. So us sharing those views is like, you know, you might as well do it together. Right. And get active. But, yeah. So, talk about more about your environment because you were mm-hmm. raised in the hood, Fact. and talk about more about like how strong your mental has to be to mm-hmm. even pursue your dreams coming from the hood. Fact. So I grew up in, well, I was born in Crown Heights. Well, I spent it was like fifty fifty. You know, I spent a lot of time with my moms in Crown Heights, and then. My aunt and my cousins in Best Star, but I grew up in a piece with my mom's. It was me, her, and my five older sisters in a crib. So, you know, it was a lot going on. And for me personally, it was like I used my imagination to escape. Like I never like wanted to deal with nothing negative. Like anything that was negative, I just didn't want to deal with it. Like, you know, I just went to my craft. You know, I was always drawing. I was always playing with toys. I was always watching cartoons. Like, I didn't really want to focus on what was going on. And my mom did a good job of, like, keeping all of us, like, in the house. And I didn't really get to come outside for real, like, by myself until I was, like, teenager, like, wow. 15, going into high school. So, you feel me? I do give her that for keeping us safe during those times. But me growing up in the sty, that's where I kind of learned how to be outside and how to maneuver in the streets and be on my cousins and you know we were safe over there too of course but that was kind of my dynamic like going from the peas to the brownstones of bed style you know i got to live in two different lives mm-hmm. for real so it was cool yeah yeah was- would you say like your craft was your escape to Facts. because i feel like with imagination especially as kids a mm-hmm. lot of kids they use their imagination and it's a way for them to like teleport into a different reality, but in your mind, you know what I mean? So was that like your safe haven for you, your craft? Yeah, for sure. That was definitely my safe haven. Mm -hmm. Just being able to live in that cartoon world for real. Like that's what it was for me. Like it was kind of like a cartoon world. Like I just felt like a superhero as a kid. Like everything was kind of like a game to me. Mm -hmm. And that was my escape. My mom told me how to draw. So like I was... I would say I was kind of under her. Like, she taught me how to sew, mm-hmm. hand sew, and draw. And, you know, she taught me most of what I know creatively. And then I kind of took that and just went crazy mm-hmm. after that. So, so yeah. considering, like, your mom helped, she helped water that creativity, right? Yeah. Um, were, Was there, how important is it for your environment, even though, or the people, around you, not even the environment, mm-hmm. to help water your vision? How important is that to you? It's super, super, super important because I've been, I've lived many lives and I've been around so much different people. And I would say the group I'm around now, it's kind of like I chose people from different parts of my life and just bunched them all up into one circle. So it's like we bring attributes from like hustlers and nerds and creatives and, you know, like it's just a whole bunch of different like 
people within the same group, but we all just have the same vision. Like we all want the same result. So mm -hmm. just having that around me all the time, you know, we all push each other to just get better and we hold each other, we, we hold each other accountable so much. Like there's not a day that goes by that me and bro is not thinking about what we got to do. Like there's a task every single day, every single week. Like there's always something to do. Like I'll be at work working on stuff for mm -hmm. the brand and you know what I'm saying? So just having those type of people around to just remind you that, you know, life is not really a game. Like you really got to get active if you want to change the world. And, you know, I just appreciate having them around. And that is really super important to me. You sound very tunnel vision. Like Thanks. not even the haters is get, gonna get to you at this point nah. on your journey. You sound very focused on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with haters, dream killers, people that are trying to distract you? Haters, I would say, I don't even have much haters anymore. I feel like maybe I used to. I don't even know. Because I don't pay people much attention. Okay. For me. And I like to kill people with kindness. You know, I just mm -hmm. maneuver with love with everybody. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult for people to really continue to hate on you when you just maneuver with love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, eventually people start to feel dumb when they can't get to penetrate your bubble. Yeah. You feel me? So, okay. for, so that's kind of how I've always been. And even for those that have penetrated the bubble and tried to, I don't know, ruin what I got going on. It was just like, you know, like, you know, you run into a little bump and just yeah. find a different approach. I mean, okay. but the train don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you're so unbothered. Facts. <laughs> like, you're Mr. Unbothered. Sure. Do you think it's hard for people, like, hood people? Because, like, hood culture mm -hmm. has been... It has thrived off of conflict, off of people tearing each other down, mm -hmm. off of just being very negative. So do you think it's hard for people in the hood to support one another, especially because of their environment? Yeah. To support, I would say it's kind of like 50-50 in my head. It's like... You know, people don't want to see, like, people don't really care whether you're doing good or bad. People don't want to see you doing bad necessarily, and they want to see you doing good, but just not better than them. So it's like, I feel like as long as they're also doing good and you're doing good, it's like, you know, there's no real problems for real because there's no jealousy, there's no hate, there's no none of that going on. But, you know, it's it's always when someone's liking something. You know, like, most, most hood beef goes over, like, bread or a woman or you know what I'm saying like that's mm -hmm. where shit really start from so it's like you know if everybody had a girl or if everybody had money there wouldn't be no problems for real so mm -hmm. um yeah if if everybody had something then wouldn't really be no issues or yeah do you believe what school did you even go to? Did you go to a school like around you, your zone school, or did you get out your neighborhood to go to school? A little bit. When I would say from pre K to fifth grade, I went to school downtown. Okay. I mean, again, because my mom, you know, trying to keep us out the hood, so mm -hmm. I went to school downtown. I went to um, Head Start over on Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. I went to PS Nine on Underhill by um, what can I say that's by? By the the library. Public library, okay. big one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Central I went to school library. over there. Yeah, so I went to school over there. And um, middle school, I ended up going to school across the street from my house. So I was real mad about that one for me. It was, it was <laughs> yeah, real ghetto in there. Crazy. But for me, that kind of gave us character. Like, I went through a lot in that school. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I was able to get out. And I went, I went to, I spent fifth and sixth grade in the hood. And then seventh and eighth, I went to school in Park Slope because I was finally able to like transfer back out. Mm -hmm. And those both years were like my whole middle school career was like the best couple years I've ever had, like growing up. So in high school, I went to school all the way in Coney Island. I went to Lincoln. Okay. Abraham Lincoln, yeah. That was only for sports though. Yeah, I where, figured. Facts because they really played, good. Where I played football. But mm -hmm. if it wasn't for sports, I probably would have went to school downtown too. Probably mm -hmm. went to like BHSA or some shit. For me. That's yeah. interesting because like I went to school in different neighborhoods too for that same reason. Because mm -hmm. like, you know, 
neighborhoods closer to where I was living, where it was predominantly black, just didn't have as much resources as neighborhoods outside. Yeah. So my mom made sure I went to like, you know, like Mill Basin, where it was like, you know, predominantly Italian. Yeah. And it had just more resources. And you see, I you could like see the difference, you know? Yeah. Um, sure. Even though I did go to school close to the home, it still had like good resources, but like they had like a whole band program and stuff like that, just mm. expanding kids' minds to like Facts. different things. Like I played the flute, you know, I could still play the flute, mm. and it's not a lot of people that could play the flute. So, what did that experience do for you, like going from different schools? Like, how did that expand your mind instead of just staying at one in one place? Being in like going to school in the hood. Mm-hmm. Kinda, that made me work on like my character more. Yeah, the character like, development. Yeah, is crazy like big. you had to, <laughs> you had to be tough. Like you had to have tough skin. You had to be tough. At the same time, you had to learn discipline too, because you know, like you can't really crash out every chance you get. Yeah, you feel me? Because there's always somebody that's tougher than you. So mm. you know, you just had to learn your limits and pick your battles, and you know what I'm saying. So yeah. that helped me out with my character, and then mm -hmm. going to school in. Park Slope and downtown, that kind of helped me with just being able to see that there's a different life. Yeah. You know, just yeah. seeing that there's more to do with yourself other than being in the hood. Like, there's such a big world other than where you at. Like, some people don't leave the block. Like, there's some yeah. people that, like, I've met people that haven't even left Crown Heights their whole life. And mm. they're, like, 30, 40 years old. You mm. know what I'm saying? So, me being able to move around, I'm just glad I got that experience. Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah, I know people that don't even leave, leave Canarsie, and I'm like, yeah. like why? <laughs> why right. not? Oh, my ops. They, like, they don't mess with people in other hoods. I'm like, nobody yeah, cares. Right. Nobody's looking for you. Like, that's just so the stupid. story they tell themselves. Yeah, it's... <sighs> that, that's why we do what we do. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of youth, and even them, like, you know, the people that's our age, that's tied into those things. Like, they just don't... Some of them, they see that there's more to do, but they don't know how close to home it is. Mm. You know, like, I've grown up with some people that probably didn't think that they could make it out. And some people that didn't make it out, but I'm right next door and I'm doing things that you could be doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm doing shit that people probably, you know what I'm saying? Like, you will look at my address and probably be like, oh, nah, he's... Blah, 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 and then you see me, you speak to me, and it's a whole different thing. So mm -hmm. for me, like, just for them to see that there's so much more to life than where you at, like. Um, so you did have the support you needed, right? Do yeah. you feel like, all right, do you think society is catered to dreamers? Nah. I don't think it's catered to dreamers. Word. It, mm -hmm. I would say, like, you really have to live the life that everyone else is living. Like, just living a normal life, like what people call normal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you got to dress like people. You got to speak like people. You got to do what they're doing. Go to the same stores, eat the same you gotta thing. You got to play the game. Yeah, like, other than that, you, you're weird or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's necessarily supported. Word. It's only, it's only really supported when you make something of it. Yeah. Where it's like the weirdos are only cool when they're famous or when they're lit or, you know what I'm saying? Like we That's have where your imagination than... plays exactly. into part because like you got to imagine where you want to go before other people see it. Facts. Because people don't see the vision. It's your vision. Word. Only you can see it. People um, definitely won't see it for you. Yeah. Word. For real. So do you feel like how, do you think, hmm, how do I even phrase this? Do you think that if more people believe, what would a world look like if more people believed in themselves? There would be so much more like individuality. Like there would be so much more, probably some crazy inventions. Clothes probably will look crazy. Language will probably be crazy. Like everything will probably be so different. Like if everybody was just themselves. Like, the general population, like, is, they're all, like, clones. Like, everybody's yeah. dressing the same, talking the same, going to the same five spots every weekend, you know, doing the same thing. They like, like, copy and paste of each other. Yeah. It's strange. And it's, and it's only because they think that's what's cool or that's what's going to make them lit. And it's 
Mm-hmm. It's not. If we all trying to get through the same door, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard for everybody to achieve something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay to go jump out the window, fuck around if you want to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, if people just understood that, like, life would be easier. Like, a lot of people go through so much shit mentally just trying to keep up when yeah. you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's story is the same. Not everybody got to be dark in India. Go be yourself. Like, go be <laughs> you. You feel me? It's okay to do that. And people just don't really grasp it till it grasp it till it's too late. And I feel know? like it's way more exhausting trying to uphold the image that's not true to yourself because yeah. you have to keep feeding that image, and it's draining because it's not you. Facts. So that's where the mask comes, where people feel like they have to wake up every day and they have to put on that mask, yeah. and then they have to fulfill that that duty that they put on themselves. And I feel like that's harder than yeah. being yourself. That's a fact. Like, we should all chase, like, true freedom. And that's just subjective to yourself. You know, you all, mm-hmm. we all have our own definition of what shit is, but... So what's freedom to you? Freedom is just being able to do whatever comes to my mind, I'm just able to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, whether I got to learn it or I'm just able to do it automatically, like, that's just freedom to me. Like, just being able to do whatever... Uh, of course, not breaking laws or nothing, but, you know, like, creatively, you know, just being able to just mentally think, feel, and just do without worrying about any outside views or opinions. Mm. Like, that's, like, true freedom for me. You know, just being able to just block out anything that's, like, that'll disrupt my imagination. Because that's, I'm still running on that to this day, like, Mm-hmm. Whatever comes to mind, even down to how I speak, like my little outbursts or whatever, like I just say whatever, do whatever. You feel me? Because that's what feels natural. Like that's why I feel most comfortable just doing what I want to do. Like when I'm forced to do what everyone else is doing, it's kind of just like that's when I become uncomfortable. And yeah, it feels anxious. mundane. Yeah, it feels like you're just following a status quo. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like a lot of people who do? think like you a lot of dreamers i think like us mm. um have a similar mentality they are told to be realistic a lot and do you do you feel like that's a way to diminish or like is it like telling them to shut up in a way to be more realistic cuz like to like counter your art like what you just said mm-hmm. say some you saying like okay i want to just do this right now i want to go to the beach right now Facts. and then Somebody's like, nah, that's not like realistic. Like you all the way in here and they trying to tell you you can't do it because you yeah. like, you think that's just a way of telling you to shut up because they can't do what they want to do? Yeah, I will definitely say that's like a form of like projection. Mm-hmm. Like even growing up, you know, there'll be some adults that, you know, you will say you have a dream to be what, a firefighter or something. And that might be far fetched for them. You know what I'm saying? They probably will never see themselves as a firefighter or nothing like that. And mm-hmm. They would just project that on you, like, oh, like, nah, you from here, you can't do that. Like, and that's, I feel like that's what a lot of people on a block go through. Like, you know, everybody has a dream. Like, everybody grows up dreaming. Like, we're all like a clean slate growing up. And just over time, we pass through so much different views and knowledge and advice that can either cloud or project us into the future. But Yeah, it's just, that does limit people so much if you take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes a very strong mind to not allow other people's judgment to affect you. Facts. Um, And I think it's an underrated skill. Yeah. Because it's really a skill. It's something you practice. You just, it's not like you just wake up and you like, or you just, you're born with it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's something you have to keep teaching yourself and telling yourself. So how did you become Mr. Unbothered? Because I feel like you're just so unbothered by other people's opinions. How did you get to this point? And were you always like this? Oh, nah. I would say growing up, I was real, like, I had, I guess you could call it anger issues. Like, I was just quick to act on things. Like, you know, you said something that bothered me, I'll probably fight you, like, right then and there. Like, as, as a kid. Yeah. Where, like, when I was, when I got to middle school, that all changed. But, you know, being young, that's definitely how it was. Um, 
like I said, like middle school kind of taught me character because there's always somebody that's stronger, tougher than you are. So mm -hmm. going through that phase of my life and then entering high school to, you know, kind of getting into finding myself and kind of stepping into fashion too. I kind of went through a little phase like, you know, I wanted to wear what I wanted to wear. You know what I'm saying? Like skinny jeans wasn't really hot back. It was, but it wasn't really hot in our state yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of there when like H&M was releasing like the biker, the biker jeans and all okay. like the skinny jeans. For me, so I was wearing that those. Was drip back then. For me, I was wearing those, but the people I was around wasn't really on that yet. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it was kind of different for me. Like they would try to call me gay, all that other crazy shit. I didn't really pay it no mind. It, it did get annoying sometimes, but I didn't really pay it no mind because I knew what I was capable of. Like, I knew what I was doing. I was getting girls and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't really nothing crazy for me. But going through that kind of taught me how to, like, I feel like that's where I kind of saw my superpower. Like, I bet, like, they could say whatever, but it's like... You know who you are. Yeah, I know who I am. And even down the line, like, them same people come to me asking for fashion advice. Like, yo, should I put this together? Like, yo, that fit is crazy. Uh -huh. And it's the same people that was calling me gay back in high school. Mm, for me, so it's like... crazy how... For me, how shit come full circle. Yeah, literally. Yeah, and I, like, that really told me my superpower and I've just been maneuvering the same ever since. Mm. For me, it's just like, do what you want to do. And I've seen how that has benefited so much other people. Like, when you just do what you want to do and just keep all that shit out your way. Mm. Keep all of it out the mix. Sorry. Yeah, especially in New York City schools, they're so like judgmental. These kids yeah. are so harsh. Word. Like I don't know how people work at these schools, how people teach. Like these kids will cut cut your ass as a forty five year old, and yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. And it's crazy you say it because I work with kids now. I mean, I've been working with kids for the past like about to be five years now. So I mean, I've definitely seen them do that to other kids, like. Oh, mm -hmm. you got that on, you got this on, you got that on. Mm -hmm. And just me being me, I've been able to like step in and just be like, yo, like, that's him. That's what he wants to do. Like, that's how he is. And they didn't really understand it until they tried to do it to me. Like, oh, yo, you got this on, Mr. Kwa. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm just like, okay, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm still flatto. You feel me? Like, at least I'm, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. once they once they got that from me, then they started maneuvering with the other kids differently. Like, mm. Oh, like, let me stop bothering him. Let me focus on myself. Let me focus on, like, let me be more self-aware yeah. versus getting on other people. Like, I have stuff that I don't got. You know what I'm saying? Like, you mm -hmm. from, maybe when you go home, you don't got this. You don't got that. But you talking about another kid that might not have something. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, off the looks. Exactly. You never really know. So that's what I do try to teach the mm -hmm. youth when I come across those type of issues. Yeah. Or, it's ruthless out there, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's not easy with them kids. It's getting worse. Or... I heard some. I heard a kid in a park call another kid, and they call another kid a disabled cricket. I'm like, yo, these kids nah. are so creative. I've yeah, never, nah, I've that's... never heard that, <laughs> like ever. Yeah. It's like I can't. Like I was laughing. I'm like, damn, now nah, it looks bad because like that was good, and the kid didn't know what to say back. But yeah, now nah, they super, <laughs> super, super unfiltered. But yeah, it's 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 good and bad. Mm -hmm. It's good and bad. Some some people need it. No. Do you think it's easier or harder being a positive or negative person? Which one do you think is easier? I say it's easier being positive. Like, you know, like who doesn't want to be happy? Mm -hmm. you know I mean, and everybody wants to be happy. So it's like when you actually find that for yourself and you hold on to that and you keep going, it's like that's where you want to be at. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll probably say, like, when I do get in, and it's hard to get me upset, but when I do get into that space, Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't be in that space longer than a couple of hours to a day. Like I wouldn't be mad about something like mm -hmm. over time. Like even even me being sad, I wouldn't be sad about something for too long. You feel me? And I'll say it's definitely easier to be happy than it is to be sad and upset. You know, it takes way more energy. I think I think growing up, I heard something where like it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. Yeah, it takes more or, facial, yeah, facial me, muscles to frown. Or so it just it's it's been smooth. Or mm -hmm. everybody should be happy. Like why not? For real. Do you think I feel like coming from New York, we have that like 
stigma where everybody's just negative. Everybody mad all the time, angry at their world, hate their job. They just mad, angry. Yeah. Um, do you think we live up to that to a certain extent? We do. I would say it's just surface level though. Like mm. I've met a lot of nice of course, well, we we grew up here, so like we know that New York is not really like as gritty as it sounds. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? Mindset. Like the environment, you know what I'm saying? Mindset. Facts. And it's like surface level, you just have to be ready for whatever. So that's why we be so like, we look mean and we probably talk mean. Or, you know what I'm saying? You probably say something, we be like, what? So I mean, well, you just got to be ready for whatever. But mm. most people aren't even really yeah, mean for it's real. It's the exteriors, like, for yeah. real. Yeah. Because like, I feel like I always say you got to carry a mean mug around, especially as a female. Yeah. Because you don't want to be approached. Yeah. In a certain manner, you know, yeah, you look too cool, nice. Yeah. People look at that as a green light to speak to you and just even flirt with you sometimes. Yeah. So um, nice. I feel like it's just a protective mechanism we've adopted living here yeah. just to not be pushed over. Mm-hmm. But once you speak to somebody, like, I feel like we are mad genuine. Like, we open up. Yeah. Like, Shit, we look, man, if y'all, if you're not from here, just know we some nice people. I mean, there's just a lot of crazy shit that goes on. Yeah, it's weirdos out here, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like... But for the most part, people are nice. Yeah, you just don't know what you get. What was it not to... What what was that? Back in, like, December or before, when all the bums... I don't know what it was in the air, but all the bums just going crazy on the train. (laughs) Feel me? I know exactly. Bro, bro, slap somebody with... Yo. I'm like, you feel me? Like, you just don't know what's going on. Nah, they was doing whatever. Yeah, like it was so the most just... random stuff. Like the news was reporting about, like, yeah, like some lady ready. just got slapped, like, and another lady got slapped. I'm like, wait, what? Right, like, should be should be so random. Yeah. So you just really got to be ready out here, but mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's what comes when you live in a city full of billions of people. It's just a billion possibilities. You know what I mean? Too um, close, too much people here. Yeah, oh, wow. they go on top of each other. Like I couldn't hear my neighbor fart. I right. promise you. For it. Crazy. Um, I want to get back into mindset because this mm. show is heavily about mindset. We talk mm. about just mindset development. Yeah. And the power of using your internal world to attract your out out external world. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe truly believe that whatever is happening inside of you is projected into your reality. Facts. So how do you feel about that? Just mind over matter, that statement. What do you think about when you hear that? Um, I agree with what you said with, you know, what you think you attract, you know, the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. I definitely believe that. And if you stay in a certain mindset, that's what comes to you all the time. Like I have friends that, you know, they think negatively of certain situations before it even comes in it. That's what happens to them because mm-hmm. that's what you were so heavy on. And for me personally, it doesn't happen that way because I always try to think positively on things before shit comes and things have been smooth. Like I'm living in, and a lot of, well, what a lot of people need to see too is that, you know, we're living in shit that we pray for a couple of weeks ago, months ago, last year, years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like we're living in that now. So don't really shoot yourself down before shit even comes up. Like it's mm-hmm. keep that positive mindset if you can. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, mind of a matter for real. Like, don't like I said before, it's not really about where you are right now. It's about where you're going. And even for me right now, like what I've been I moved out about a year ago. You know, thanks to my brother. Moved out about a year ago. Congratulations. Thank you. For me, before that, it was like I never thought to myself that I would be here forever or that I wouldn't make it out. You know what I'm saying? And I always kept that to myself. Like, yo, like, no matter how it happens, you won't be here one day. Like, you'll go somewhere. You'll go do something great one day. Mm -hmm. For me? And it was so crazy how shit happened so quick. You feel me? Just keeping that mentality and Mm -hmm. opportunity just came like that and I was gone. Out of there. For me? And a lot of people just need to hold on to that little thing. Like, just... It's just so little, surface level. Like, just Mm -hmm. believe in your situation and yourself, Mm -hmm. no matter what goes on. Like, I tried moving out plenty of times before, and shit didn't happen. But I just knew, like, yo, this is not the place for you. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, not the right not, time. Exactly. You're not ready, me? probably yet. Exactly. That too. For me, mm-hmm. you just have to be around the right people, and there's certain pieces that you need before you move on. Right. So, um, how do you feel about like? It sounds like you've placed yourself, or you attracted like the right people in your environment to help you grow with your dream. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has made like your route seamless almost, right? Yeah. Um. Unfortunately, that's not the case for everybody, right? Facts. Um, some people, unfortunately, have different cards dealt to them. And it's harder because they're getting more resistance from the people around them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, with that being said, how do you feel like some encouragement for people who aren't really where you are yet with that mentality of just blocking everything out. Because at times it feels like it's an attack on their dreams. They can't even speak about their dreams no more. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes when you can't speak about your dreams, you're still suppressing it because Fact. when you speak about things out into your reality, you're speaking it into existence. Mm-hmm. That's why they say speak it into existence. That's like manifesting. Mm-hmm. Um... It really comes from you, and it's you know it sounds easier said than done, always with mm-hmm. a lot of things, but it really comes from you, like I've been through you know my mom, you know not to put on the spot, sorry mom, for me not Shout to put on mama. the spot, you know mama. what I'm saying, like there was a certain point in time, even though she installed so much in me mm-hmm. where and this is what goes on within our community, and you know, I would say Caribbean parents mostly, but just black folks overall, you know, they, you know, like they just want to see you win, but they want to see you win, whether that's what your dreams or not. So I've been through phases where my moms or whoever, like family members have like told me like, yo, like just get into this, get into that, like go do sanitation, go take this test, go take that test, go be an engineer, go do that be versus following your dream. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm just like, bro, like, yeah, that's cool. Like money is cool. But it's like, without happiness, all that shit is dead. Like, all that shit is whack. Like, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. So it really just comes from you, for real. Like, you really just have to see it. Like, once you see it, then you believe it. For me, seeing is believing. Mm-hmm. Casper shit. But yeah, you really just have to see it for yourself. Like, mm-hmm. there's never a time. Like, I have the same visions over and over and over again. Like, I created that for myself. And I mm-hmm. feel like I'll get there eventually. But it's the same vision, the same picture every single time Mm -hmm. where I see myself in those environments doing those same things that I'm praying for myself to get to. Mm -hmm. And you just have to see it. Like, you really have to see it. And you could do that shit. Like, I've helped a lot of people that thought they couldn't do certain things. And it just took seeing it for themselves to even take the first step. Like, a lot of people thought they couldn't even, like, think of a brand for themselves or think of how to brand themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, not even having a brand, just branding yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you just got to see it for yourself. Yeah, right. faith. Faith, exactly. that's really what it is. Facts. It says sometimes you just got to, you don't see by sight, see by faith. Mm-hmm. And people, too, where they go wrong, good things have faith because faith without work is dead. You yeah. for me? So it's like a lot of people, like, mm. they may want to do, they want to do so much. Yeah. But nobody want to put the work in. Like, nobody wants to actually sit down and pull out a notebook and write some shit down or go down a mm-hmm. rabbit hole of what you want to do and people and study people that have been there before you. And you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, just doing those things that you need to do to just be fully of yourself in your dream. Tunnel vision. People don't want to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they... They don't understand that, yes, like, fun will always be there. And I still enjoy myself. Yeah. Like, fun will always be there. Like, I've I've taken time off of going to clubs and all of that. And, uh, and I go back and it's the same people. Same shit going on. It's scary. I mean? Yeah, so it's like you don't, like, you're not really missing out. And yeah. doing and having that self-isolation phase, you'll find that other things are fun. You feel me? Like... You know, so I mean, people probably look at it small, 
type shit. Like at a certain point in time, I was trash and bone. Like I was super dookie. I used to hate that shit. <laughs> and then once I really took the time to be like, yo, like I bet this is how you roll the ball. You could do this, you could do that. Now I love bowling, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're just getting active in there. I did not see that coming. (laughs) Yeah, like, people just don't, like, just take the time to focus. Yeah. And put that work in, and you'll see how much shit around you changes. And even you being, you being so about yourself and about your work will change your environment, too. You know what I'm saying? That'll bring certain people along, like you said, attracting. Mm -hmm. And that'll also shave off ones that don't need to be around you. You know what I'm saying? Like some people don't, mm-hmm. some people will see you going crazy or you just so into your work and they'll get intimidated versus like, you know, asking for help or, or just jealous. feeding off that, like feeding off your energy and yeah. being motivated. Like I have bros that aren't necessarily doing what I'm doing, but they see me doing what I'm doing and it motivates them to get out of mm-hmm. what they're, like where they're at and just do more for themselves. Like yeah. whether it's the same vision as me or a different one. And a lot of people just need to, See that, like, you don't got to be jealous of your bros. You don't got to be jealous of nobody. Like, take that same, take that same energy and be inspired. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's like we all got the same 24 hours, and if somebody else exactly. can do it, you can definitely do it. Exactly. And some people are doing it with little to nothing, less than what mm-hmm. you have. Somebody has exactly the same circumstance, the same resources that you have, and they've done, like, they've done what they need to do to get where they are. Facts. And people, it's all about mindset. Some people will see that as a threat and some people will see that as inspiration. So mm-hmm. choose a mindset that you feel like is going to bring you like joy and peace because I feel like, like you said, I feel like positivity is way easier, but it's marketed to us like it's hard. Yeah. Like, oh, this podcast isn't going to sell because you're not talking about sex or... You should be talking about this or you should be talking about that because nobody's going to care. But I truly believe that not everybody has that toxic mentality. Not everybody wants to hear the same things repeated, repeated about, oh, yeah, you're like just weird stuff that grown people be talking about on podcasts, which is yeah. concerning. But that's a whole different episode. Um, I mean, I'm tired of the way our culture is right now like all of those topics like the whole mm-hmm. man versus woman thing especially yeah. us like our man versus woman our kings and queens mm-hmm. versus each other and I, and for me that's a whole different conversation you know what I'm saying yeah. all of that was installed from way back mm-hmm. you feel me and it's working Keep now and, we're, and it's working now mm-hmm. and we still lost but um, I want to touch on social media too mm-hmm. it's, it's a big that's just an abyss of things we could talk about there but I want to talk about specifically just what's promoted on social media right now. Yeah. And first of all, your content creation game is crazy. Like you're doing Thank your you. thing. Like I love the visuals, the animated, like mm-hmm. oversized things you be doing. Like it's very different. It's creative. Thank and you. it's it reminds me of like old meme culture. Mm. When I see your content, like it, it just that's how I interpret it. It's like very cool. Um but that was that was our era. Yeah. Era. Um, I'ma post some stuff too of like his pics and stuff. Um, yeah, but I went on a whole tangent. Back to the social media thing, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you as a creator stay tunnel vision in that it's just a abyss of distraction sometimes? Yeah. You could get caught into the scrolling, into the comparing very easily. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we're all the same in certain aspects. You know what I'm saying? I catch myself scrolling. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... I wouldn't even say it's normal, but it's normal. You feel me? Like, we mm-hmm. all do those things, and it just takes, it's like... It's normal at this point. Yeah, like, it's... I feel like as long as you're getting what you need to do, done. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's okay to do that, but, you know, just make sure your your priorities are straight. Mm-hmm. And just staying away from the distractions. It's kind of like... It's just being self-aware. Like, just knowing yourself, like... Like I don't I don't fanboy over anybody. Like I don't care how bad you are. I don't like I'm not a fan of anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would love your work and you know I'll be so inspired, but like mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that I want to live your life. Mm-hmm. Like you inspire me to do what I need to do for myself, not to be just like you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way people need to interpret what they see. Mm-hmm. Not to just do the same thing that they're doing. Like I listen mm-hmm. to some crazy music. I listen to the same drill everybody else listens to. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean that I wanna go kill somebody. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't want to go pick up a strap or something. You know what I'm saying? I might pick one up for my family, 
You know what I'm saying? Like down the Wait, line. Yeah. Where but not, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not gonna go beef with nobody over mm-hmm. no bread or no girls or no, you know what I'm saying? Like people just need to see that and just just be yourself. You feel me? Yeah. Going back to that. Like just I be think yourself. also social media obviously is a reflection of our society too. Yeah. Um if you are a conscious person, mm-hmm. you're gonna see conscious things on your timeline. So your scrolling mm-hmm. is actually benefiting you in mm-hmm. a way. And if you're a toxic person, you're gonna see straight toxicity on your timeline, Facts. which is interesting that how that whole algorithm works. Mm-hmm. Um, also, feel like this instant gratification era um, is also making it look like the process is easier than what it really is. Yeah, Facts. and uh, I feel like a lot of kids that are growing up in a social media era are getting very like discouraged when it comes to following their dreams because they see people their age who have all these things but they're not showing the process of it Mm -hmm. so how do you feel about like just that instant gratification age and just like that kind of image of like overnight success that is being portrayed not the process gotcha i would say with that now is it's sort of like common sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, of course, you're not seeing what they had to do to get there. Mm-hmm. But you should know that it takes some sort of work to get there. Like, you know, some people do blow up over a day. Some people do, you know what I'm saying? You could jump over the table and be viral and maybe earn millions just for that one video. But maybe. for most, <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know what I'm saying? But for most, like, most people put the work in. Like, most people have been through things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all have similar stories like we all came from most of us came from struggle you know so it's like just taking where you've been from and just seeing that how would i say i would say like and it's crazy for people because they could see somebody going through struggle and they could hear somebody's backstory and still just want to earn something quick you know what i'm saying like they would just want to skip that whole process and it's like Mm -hmm. bro you can't do that like you know it's not that's not how it works for everybody Mm -hmm. and that's that's not how it works for most Mm -hmm. you know so but when you're just catching a reel or catching a quick few seconds of something and not seeing the whole process Mm -hmm. it kind of can like manipulate people to thinking like damn they have everything together and it's just there like you know especially younger kids yeah and that shit took work like Mm any anytime i can like i love to share like the process of what things was and like the inspiration and the the process that it was to get where we was at. And that's why me and bro, you know, we shoot so much BTS. Like even if we just mm-hmm. sitting on the couch talking, you know, like even before we had a couch, you know what I'm saying? Like we record all of that. Like we take videos and pictures of everything. Like mm-hmm. just so that one day we could show people like, yo, like this came from somewhere. It wasn't like, it wasn't like bro just had a family and you know, we was gifted whatever we had. Nah, mm-hmm. this shit took work. Like, it was times where we was eating the same meal every day. Not Well, it's not bad. You know what I'm saying? We meal mm-hmm. prep. You know what I'm saying? You got to do that. But it's, it's certain times where we was eating the same things and we ain't have a couch. You know what I'm saying? We ain't have a TV yet. You know? Like, and you was shit still takes filming. work. You was still exactly. You feel me? Because yeah. we still had to get shit done. And we knew that what we do mm-hmm. would change our environment. And now we have those things. Like, now shit is different for us. You feel right. me? People just need to understand, like, you really have to look within yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, that's where everything starts. Like, you cannot yeah. look... You cannot look outside, too far outside of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like... I can see someone on a train, a married down with a baddest shorty, and it's just like, all right, cool, like that's where you at. But like, one, we on the same train together, and two, like I don't know what you did to get what you have. You know what I'm saying? Even for her, and that's what a lot of people need to see too. Like that's mm. a whole nother thing. Like mm. people just come to you because they think you have something, or that they think that they can benefit from you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some people may look rich and don't give you a dollar. You feel me? And and, and that's why a lot of people get messed up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I might see blah, 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 blah. He got all his bread. He driving these cars. Whole time is rentals. Whole time the bread was probably scammed. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I was was there before. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's never longevity. 
know what I'm saying? Everything is always quick. Yeah, it's like quick, you give with somebody what you don't appreciate it. Exactly. Like everything is so quick and they have it now, but you don't know where it's gonna go. And that's why people just have to put work in right. so that shit lasts. Mm -hmm. Whether that's music, clothes, brands. Like I've seen people that create a brand just because it brings you some bread, but they're not thinking of long term and where they should go with it. Mm -hmm. And shit just don't last. It's not you know intentional. Exactly. So Yeah. You really just gotta put work and live within yourself. Mm -hmm. right. And I want to talk also about like fun because mm -hmm. what's seen as fun also on social media is like a lot of like, you know, partying, drinking. That's the yeah. main thing that's promoted as fun. And I love that earlier you mentioned how when you step away from those things, you see other things maybe funny like bowling, mm -hmm. which you're not really going to see people doing on your feed like that yeah. unless, you know, that's unless your something. niche. Yeah. Um, so I think that also the instant gratification also plays a role into our age group not being okay with being bored. Facts. And I feel like in that, like, just that's, you know, that stillness is where you find what you like. Yeah. Like, it's okay to sit the fuck down. It's okay yeah. to chill. You feel me? Like. And sometimes that stillness does bring in other things. Like, what would I say? Like, just being at home or sometimes you could just be on a stoop, be on your stoop in the hood and just, you know, you might miss the opportunity to be inspired by something because you're always moving around and just living that fast life. Like, yo, I got to wake up, I got to go to this club, I got to do this, got to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like you miss certain things that you can just enjoy. Yeah. The little things, you feel me? Like just being able to sit outside or take a walk and just see people, meet people, like seeing how other people are living, just enjoying the nature, enjoying the weather. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Eating fruits outside, grounding, like all those type of things. Like people miss out on that because they just want to live that Fast. life. You feel Fast me? That's life. Like what seems cool. And mm -hmm. You miss those opportunities when you're trying to live the same life. Like when you move within your same lane, like this stuff, this there's a life for you already. And when you're trying to move out your lane, you miss what's for you. Trying to mm -hmm. grasp what someone else already got. Mm -hmm. For me. Um, but yeah, just being able to sit down, you miss out on so much. And even about yourself, like people don't the fact that you're moving around so much and all of that, you don't see yourself. Like you don't take the time to look into yourself and think about yourself and mm -hmm. take care of yourself. Like, a lot of people are messed up in the head, but, like you said, the instant gratification and that little satisfaction of just going outside and drinking and smoking and, you know what I'm saying? People need that to live, and that's so crazy. Like, people need to drink, people need to smoke, people need to do certain things mm -hmm. to function, and that's really crazy. And it's like... Or always be around a bunch of people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's like, if you would just sit down... And think for yourself for once. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'll realize so much. Like, you'll realize how great you are. And you need to appreciate certain things about yourself when yeah. you get there. But people just need to start off just getting away from everything and just mm -hmm. bring it back to yourself. Like, self is so important. Mm -hmm. Word. And I feel like when you do get to that, you also attract what's right for you and in, in alignment with you. Because sometimes when you are just filling the void constantly. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Happy men's damn, what is it? Mental men's mental health month. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. Aside from all that other, you know big what I'm up, saying? Big up, I, ain't big gonna, up. I mean, I ain't gonna get into all that, but big up, yes, big up, big you up. For me, happy that for us because mm -hmm. we really need that. Yeah. For me, we go through a lot mm -hmm. in these streets. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. glad you did that. Um right. Yeah. What does that even like? Why is that so important to you? Not to get too deep into it, not to make this a whole therapy session, but why is that so important to you? It's important because for us, you know what I'm saying, coming out the womb, we have a role already. Mm. Like, we already have, damn near, we already have our whole life planned out for us. And if you don't live by that, you're not a man. You feel me? And what we need to understand, you know what I'm saying, me and my brothers, for all y'all brothers, you feel me? If you fuck with me, I fuck with you. What we need to understand is, we create that definition for ourselves. You feel me? Like, we take those norms from the world and whatever definitions, and we create that for ourselves. And that goes for not even just being a man, but just 
love, relationships, life, everything. Like, you know, you create that for yourself, that definition. So, yeah, there's a lot of us that go through shit and we're not allowed to talk about it because it's not manly. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? This whole sassy word is being thrown around for us, holding others accountable. Mm-hmm. You feel me? That shit is crazy. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We just, people just, us as men, we go through a lot. Yeah. We're not allowed to say much. Our only role is just to get up, work, protect, mm-hmm. keep your mouth closed. That's it. And provide. Exactly. And we have so much on our minds. We have so much to say. And we're just not allowed to say it. Mm-hmm. So, and I know people that's real close to me that have been through so much and just don't say much. And it hurts me to not be able to know what's going on with them just because just, that's just how... Life is. It's how the world is. Like, bro, like, go through that yourself. Figure it out. Mm. You feel me? Yeah, man. Yeah, and that should be crazy. And yeah. it's people in the the general would say, like, oh, you know, we want to hear what's on your mom. You wanted this, you wanted that. And when we finally speak, we finally say something, it's laughed at or it's turned down or mm-hmm. we're seen as soft because mm-hmm. we're vulnerable it's now. Dismissed, yes. Words. So sure. it's like that kind of just adds on to the bulletproof vest that we have already. Yeah. So... Um, I'm not gonna lie, sassy has been a very dismissive term too. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's unfair because like you've seen that list going around. I won't get too deep into it about like, oh, men aren't allowed to like Oh, that should <laughs> do this and do that and do this Word. and do that. And yeah. it's like <clears throat> what it does, it it, it masks mm-hmm. like something that's actually real into like a com- like a com- like a comical. Yeah, deep. They're they're kind of like desensitizing us from a lot of shit. Yeah, then that's important. Mm-hmm. Word. So yeah, like that sassy man apocalypse is really Word. very detrimental mm-hmm. to specifically black men, mm-hmm. and I feel like it attacks them a lot from even even more from being yeah. vulnerable. And it's in. You know, there's always a middle ground. Like, there are men out here that, you know, certain shit is like, all right, bro, like, you're a dude. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you feel me? Like, yeah, for sure. It's not that sassy isn't a thing. Mm-hmm. It's just that where they're taking it now was like, bro. It's to the point where a lot of my friends, mm-hmm. they are so, like, when they even interact with the dude, that's one of the first things on their mind is if he has any signs of being sassy. Yeah. It's to that point, which is like, huh? It's it's, it's weaponized. And yeah. so much shit is weaponized. I'm not going to get into the whole what is weaponized, but that's one of the things. Like, Yeah, for sure. It's okay to do what you want to do, feel how you feel. It's okay to do that. And, mm-hmm. and, and I'm glad that at least, you know, we're confiding in each other as men. Exactly. If it's not if it's not your mom or whoever, sister, girlfriend, whoever, at least we're talking to the bros. At mm-hmm. least. At least you're letting it out of your head. Yeah, something. And mm-hmm. I would say, like, I mean, people people have been doing it forever now. Like, especially us men, just finding our outlet, whether that's sports, music, fighting, well, like boxing and, you know what I'm saying, whatever, mm-hmm. martial arts or whatever. Um, You know, we've been doing good with that, like, just finding our outlet, but... You know, just finding a vocal outlet. I'm glad that we have that now. So, yeah, for sure. Word. I'm glad you brought that up too. We love you, men. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even know what to say. But um, <laughs> any last words you want to finish off with? Any topics you want to touch on that's on your heart, and you just want to get it off, get it out there, let the people know. Mm. Positively, I would just say, you know, just stay true to yourself. Be yourself. Figure out your purpose, man and woman. Figure out your purpose. Maneuver through that because that's what comes first. And that is what will make you a better person in this world. And we need that. And no matter how alone you feel or how whatever things are, there are eyes on you. Somebody's looking at you. Somebody's looking up to you. Somebody's watching Mm -hmm. you. So just do the right thing, especially the youth. Like, Mm-hmm. I see this I see this all the time. Like there's I've seen when I first stepped into this world of teaching kids and mentoring kids where, you know, they were their own person and then me coming and just being myself and being genuine and showing them love, how they want to be like me. You know, so there's I there's definitely eyes on you and just to 
do what you gotta do. You feel me? Don't live nobody else's life. You're your own person for a reason. We all don't look the same. We wasn't born on the same day, same time, same. You know what I'm saying? Like we're all different for a reason, mm-hmm. and we need to live by that. Yeah. Word. Not even identical twins have the same fingerprint. I never. Knew every. That. Well, I mean, that's every common sense, but fingerprint is different. Fact. They may look the same, but they not really the same. So yeah, I really like the message that you bring out here because. I'm not going to lie, these past few months, mm. I've been feeling really down because I haven't been as heavily into my craft as I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And now I'm back and I'm feeling better. So yeah, this conversation was really needed because it just reminded me that it's all in your head at the end of the day. Facts. And you, it's all mental warfare. Facts that you have, you. and even with that, like you have your own pace and time for things. Like, you may not be doing... Like, I've, of course, I see people and kids and, and even people I went to school with or whatever that's doing way better than me and they're younger than me. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, like, I wish I was doing this at that age or, you know what I'm saying? But everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And you have your own time for things. Like, you know, even me, like, I felt like my designing and my life slowed down and stuff like that. But, you know, you look back at what went ha- like what happened and you see that, you know, shit happened for a reason. And there's certain things that have to come into your life and certain things that are part of your story other than mm. what you feel like or what you think mm. is supposed to go down. And that all plays into, like, spirituality and those type of things. Mm. And just, just leaving, yes, putting the work, but also keeping the faith. Like, just mm. understanding that, you know what I'm saying, your life is already set for you and depending on your decisions is what will change how things go on like it's Mm -hmm. certain possibilities depending on what you choose Mm -hmm. but it's already set for you exactly you just have to play the game you know it's already destined facts destiny is already there like facts if it's your destiny nothing can take you away from it it may be detours but Mm -hmm. at the end it's always gonna be there the vision is in you for a reason that's why they call it tunnel, tunnel vision there's light at the end of the tunnel that's a fact. That's a fact. I like that. So if you listen to the end of another episode, I appreciate you. Like, shout out to you. Like, I feel like you really believe yourself, believe in yourself, and you really love yourself for that. Like, Word. you made it to the end. Like, big up, big up, big up. Thank you so much, Qua, for joining me. Appreciate you. Make sure you follow everything. Link in the description. Where to find him? The clothing brand. Everything is linked in the description. Facts. Tune and in. Tune yeah, in. Yeah, tune in. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, like, stay fly, <laughs> please. Stay yeah, fly. Please do. Please. I beg of you. Word. And staying fly is not just clothes. It's a mentality. Be fly. Word. It's all up here, y'all. Mind over matter, baby. Hey, that was calm. That was calm. That was calm. Yes, sir. Active. But you know, like when you bring somebody on, they gotta be like aligned mentally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 
I just got my editing program back. 